Okay, today, to make sure, uh, first, before I teach you synthetic division, that you are still able to do long division, I'm going to walk you up from the basics. Let's say I had 8 going into 41. Would you agree that 8 does go into 41, but not nicely? So it's not a factor. 8 is not a factor of 41. So prove it by using long division. Well, that's going to leave you with a remainder. Go ahead, give that a try. It goes in there five times, you get a 40, you draw a line, you make it an opposite. We do all of those things when we're doing the polynomial kind. And then you get an answer and it's a 1, but that's a problem because then there's a remainder of 1 and not 0. And so then this was not a factor. But this is pay attention now because the same thing's going to happen in polynomials in a second. That means that 8 times 5 plus the remainder would be equal to the 41. So is this in factored form? No, because it's a multiply and an add to make our total of 41. But do you get what I'm saying? That this adds up to 41 if you include the remainder? All right. Now try this one. 7 going into 57. It doesn't. But show me what factor gets you closest, and then when you add the remainder, you'll get 57. So it's making you practice long division and making you remember how the remainder works. Then when we have a remainder on our next polynomial problem, hopefully you'll be better at knowing what to do with it. All right, did you put it in there seven times? It'd be 49. Oh, how about eight? Because you guys knew right away that we were going to get too much left. 8, 56. Now that got you really close. Minus 1 left. Oh, don't try to bring down a 0. That would be if you were going to get a decimal and we'd have 8 point something as the answer. We're not doing that. So it's just a 1 left. What do you do with the 1? Well, then you say the answer is 7 times 8, but you have to add 1 to get 57. All right, let's take that to the polynomials that we learned before. Let's say I asked if x plus 1 went into x squared plus 6x plus 5. Do long division on this. Make sure it works. Got to take each step with me. This one, if you do it right, you won't have a remainder. Okay, so let's say that we got uh, x up here. I always say to start with x and then adjust it if necessary. x times x is x squared. Was it necessary to adjust? No, it worked. How do I know it worked? Because that first term matched up. All right, but I got to multiply it by the other thing. So then plus an x and then don't forget opposite, opposite. Somebody in the room, I guarantee it, forgot to make them both opposites. And then they probably got 7x where they should have got a 5x. Okay, what's next? This is the hardest step for a lot of people. Because I always tell you to start with x. But where do you put it next? Well, you have to think about it. If you want, put an x there and see what happens. x times the x would make x squared, and that's not what I wanted at all. But it'll make you think of what would have worked. So what would have worked? The 5 would have worked. A positive 5. So that 5 times the x makes 5x. And 5 times the 1 makes 5. And I draw the line opposite, opposite. Everything cancels. I get 0. And then I've always said, you're not done until you clean it up and put away the tools. This was all the work that we did to figure it out. But that's the answer. Okay. Now, what if there had been a remainder? What if the remainder had been 7? Then it would have been this times that plus 7. You see what I'm saying? If there had been a remainder. All right. I want you to see that one in action. x squared plus 5x plus 4. And I want to know what happens if I put in x plus 2. 
spoiler alert, there's going to be a remainder. Put x there and then get x times x is x squared. x times 2, 2x. Draw the line, opposite, opposite. 3x plus 4. I can make that 3x work, so I put a 3 here. 3 times the x, 3x. It's working. 3 times the 2, 6. Not working. Uh oh. Opposite, opposite. Don't forget that or you'll screw up the remainder. And the remainder was negative 2. But here's the kind of cool part. The answer is x plus 2 times x plus 3 and then minus 2. Now it's important for you to realize that is not factored. That's factored plus something. That's not factored form. So don't think, oh, so it is a factor. No, it's not a factor. But take just a second and please multiply this out and see what you get. It'll be interesting. Multiply it out. X times X makes X squared, etc. Pause for a second while you give that a try. And what does the 6 and the minus 2 make? A 4. Exactly what we had in the first place. So that's how to handle a remainder when you have a polynomial division that goes bad, so to speak. And you end up with this remainder at the end. You just slap it on to the factors that you would have. But don't be fooled into thinking that it factored, because it didn't. It factored with a remainder. Everything will factor if you counted it as a factoring with a remainder because everything can do that. All right, now we're going to move up to a more difficult one. Uh, give this one a try. So, Mr. Server, you always said to start with an x, and I did, and then it didn't work. I got x squared. Well, you're supposed to be able to learn from that and go, oh, I guess I shouldn't have started with an x. Maybe I should have started with an x squared. How many of you did start with x squared? Okay, good. Then you should have got uh, x to the third here plus 3x squared there. Ooh, that's pretty cool because they both canceled. If they both canceled, you've got to bring down two things. Because this is a binomial, the other one has to be a binomial. So I brought down two things at once. And then I need a plus 5 here. 5 times x, 5x. 5, 5 times 3, 15. There was no remainder. Remember to always clean it up at the end. x plus 3. x squared plus 5. How many of you were able to do that without my help? Okay. Good. Yes. Oh, can we factor it further? Yes, but remember this is optional. It's a good idea, though. X plus the square root of 5 and X minus the square root of 5, but then you might, I hope, take just a second and go multiply it back out and go, wait a minute, that's coming out negative. Like, like I'll have a positive and a negative, and that'll come out negative. So something's wrong. You need an extra what? I. So yeah, this is awesome factoring. It's not required, but it's awesome because kids that can factor like that, 
then when I ask the question, what are the roots real and imaginary? They'll usually be able to get these imaginary roots easy because they're already there. The real one's just negative 3. The imaginary will be i root 5 plus n minus. Because positive, negative i root 5 right there would make it 0. And positive i root 5 there would make it 0. So yeah, I'm glad you reminded me. This can be factored, but you don't have to. You could have left it here. That's still considered factored form. All right. So this one stumps so many people, and it's going to happen a lot today. Let's just leave it at that. There. Factor that. In Star Trek, Jean-Luc Picard is the captain. And there's something called the Prime Directive. That means, like, the first thing that you need to pay attention to. Okay? And in that world, it was something completely different. In factoring, the Prime Directive, the first thing you always look for, is there something in everything? And there was. What was in everything? X. So that comes out. And that's all you could do. But that's still considered factored form. You factored something out. Does that make sense? So watch for that. All right, other weird kinds of factoring. First, the prime directive. Anything factor out of everything? No, not in this case. So... If it will, it's so much easier. Like, if all of these had been, like, even numbers and I factor a 2 out, all the numbers become smaller and it's easier. So always look for that. That's your prime directive. But there isn't that. So then i got to go, okay, is this the kind I can divide down the middle? Uh, no, because you're dividing right down the middle of a term, and besides, nothing would factor in the front. Nothing would factor on the back. So, no, that kind of factoring doesn't work. So whenever there's a trinomial... You just have two sets of parentheses, and you figure it out. Who knows what starts here and here? x squared and x squared, because that's the only way to make an x to the fourth. Well, actually, you could have done a regular x and an x to the third, but we wouldn't do that to you. Because then you'd end up with a middle term that's got an x to the third in it, and we don't have that, so, yeah. All right, Chloe. What do the last two numbers have to do? This number and this number. They have to and stop there. Because the other rule you were going to say, I could tell, only works sometimes. All right, so they have to multiply to two. Yes. So now you know what they are. You don't have any other choices. You don't have to worry about that other thing you were going to worry about. So plus two and plus one. Are there things that multiply to 2? And that's got to be it. Now, how do I know it's right? And this is the thing you were going to do, but I recommend you do it this way because if there's a number in front here, we don't want to use that rule of these have to add to 3. These have to add to 3. Okay. And do they? Yeah, they add up to 3x squared, so yay, it's right. But I'm going to challenge you with do the uh, cool kid factoring. Kids who are going to get the A's on the test can do next level factoring. Would I make you do this on the test? Nope. But if you can, will you do better on the test? For sure. It's really not that hard. You go x and x and plus and minus, and then what multiplies to 2, but they have to be the same. With this little pattern, they have to be the same thing. You can't use a 2 and a 1. 
So I got to go square root of 2 and the square root of 2. And then you got to check it quick. The outside and inside cancel, which is great. But when I to multiply out the first, I get x squared. That's all good. But this last one, I'm going to do it in blue here. That one does not equal 2 when you multiply it out. It equals negative 2. So how do I get the extra negative? I. If you put an I here, the I's have it. Okay. And then cut us a lot of time savings there. Alex, I bet you can do this last one. You got it. And if I wasn't sure he was right, I would check it by going first. Outside, inside cancels. Yes, they do. And then this makes, oh, you screwed up. It's negative I squared. No. I, negative I squared is positive 1. So, yay, it worked. Then, answer this for me. How many real roots did this have? Zero. It didn't have any real roots. Did it have any zeros? Yes. Those imaginary things, when you plug them in, they would make the equation equal zero. They're zeros, but they aren't x-intercepts. So that means this graph never touches the x-axis. This graph right here never touches the x-axis. Why? Well, because it's doing its thing up in here. How do I know it's y-intercept? Finish this sentence for me. The y-intercept is where x equals 0. So I'd put in a 0, and I'd have y equals all this, and then that cancels, and that cancels, and it's just y equals 2. It has to go through 2. So maybe it looks something like this. Do I know that the right end is up? Yeah, I do, because the lead coefficient was positive. There's no negative on that. So then it must be going up on the right. And since this is even, they're both up. All right, I'm going to do a quick review of that. I want to know what's the y-intercept. I want to know is the right end up or down? Is the left end the same or different as the right end? And I want to know how many turns All right. HC, would you tell me the y intercept? I don't say full names on the video. Can you do the y intercept? I bet you can. Finish the sentence for me. The y intercept is where. Okay, it's three. But why? What's the actual saying then? The y intercept is where x equals 0. So that's 0, that's 0, so that's all gone, and so y equals 3. Yes, it has to hit like there. It's at 3. It's a y-intercept, so it's x is 0, so I'm going to say 0 comma 3. Or I could have said y equals 3. It's kind of sloppy, though, because y equals 3 is a line, and this is not really a line, it's a dot. And then the right end. I scribbled it all out. I need to see it again. The right end. Choo-choo. Down. Why? What about this said down to you? Yes. The negative in the front is saying down on the right. So it's down over here. And, Gracie, the left end, is it same or different? It's the same, so it's down. And why did you think it was the same? Because of the degree. What's the rule you look for there? If it's even, it's the same. All right, good. Now, how many terms, or turns, sorry, that's two different things. How many turns does this have? Well, it could have as many as three turns. Do you remember that? It's always one less than that. Watch. If I make one turn, I'm going the right direction. I make two turns, I'm going the wrong direction again. I make a third turn, and now I'm going the right direction again. So I can make three turns. If I made four turns, it'd be going back up, and that's the wrong direction. So four wouldn't work. 
All right, so you can always make one less than that power. That's how many turns you can make. Now, is the way I drew it right now right? No, it didn't have the right y-intercept. All right, I could do something like this. One turn, two turns, three turns. There. Now, how would I know for sure what these spots were? If this thing would factor, I'd be able to see what the roots were. That's why we're doing so much work on this factoring now, is to learn how to break up nasty looking things like that and factor them. All right, so I need to teach you a new kind of factoring, and I'm going to show you one before you try it. Imagine for a moment I had to factor this, and I had an x plus, let me think for a second, uh, 3 out here. Instead of doing it the normal way, there's this way that you are all, I know, at the beginning, uh, some people's reaction to this is, I don't want to learn a different way. I can do long division. I finally am good at that. So why are you going to make me change? I'm going to show you a shortcut that's way faster. Okay? It isn't better, but it's faster. Watch how fast I can do this with this weird, it's going to seem like I'm writing Greek up here. done. x plus 3, x squared plus 0, x plus 6. And I know you were like, what just happened? Okay. When you see something like this, there's a tendency to be like, oh, dear Lord, I don't know what's going on. It's like, if I told you something in like, I don't know, Portuguese. You'd be like, what? What did you just say? It doesn't make any sense to me. Now I'll try to show you where it comes from. This and this, that's the factor, that's the root. That's the thing that made that zero. There's a one here, wouldn't you agree? So one, three, six, eighteen, do, 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 do. That's all the numbers that came out of that equation. Then, when I dropped this down to become a 1 right there, that was me adding, there was nothing underneath it, right? There was no number here, so there was a 0 there. So I'm adding 0 to it, and I add straight down. That's what I was always doing here, is I was adding. And what was I doing as I was going across this way? I was going 1 times negative 3 makes negative 3. And then I would add them. 0 times negative 3 makes 0, and then I would add them. 6 times negative 3 made negative 18, and then I would add them. All right. I know. I think I'm a little crazy right now, but try this once. Everybody write this down. 3, 1, 4, negative 2. I'm going to write the last number in in a second. Everybody draw this across like this. Now, what would the problem have looked like? The problem would have looked like this. x minus 3 going into x to the fourth, no, third, sorry. Oh. Plus 4x squared minus 2x. Uh, and then there's one last mystery term that I haven't said yet, but I'll, I'll put it in there in a minute. That's what the problem would have looked like. All right. So just get that copied. And now, who remembered how to start? And honestly, it's one of the hardest things. Yes. What do you think? Even the one kid who's volunteering is not sure. All right. We need some good advice from somebody, like a rapper, because they always give you really good advice. Drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. The first number, you just drop it down like that. That is the only time I will be quoting Snoop Dogg this year. Okay. 
Now you drop that down. Now who remembers what to do next? 1 times the 3. Excellent. And that goes here. Who remembers what to do next? Add straight down makes what? 7. 7 times 3 makes 21. Add straight down. What's that make? Multiply 19 times 3. Ooh, that's getting big. Okay. But I'm going to put in the last number. The last number was negative 57 on the top. You didn't know that till now. You wouldn't have figured that out. It would be there. But what do you think 19 times 3 comes out to? 57. I did this times this, and I got 57. And, ooh, they canceled. Look at that coincidence. Yeah, I was cheating to try to make it work. Okay. There. That one worked. How do I know it worked? Because it had a zero remainder. Get how that's the remainder at the end? All right. Now, let's make sure you can interpret it. That means if that's the zero, what would the factor have been? X minus 3. Good. And then this one, see if you can hang with this. It's X squared plus 7X plus 19. Do you get what I just did there? That would be like the number in front of that x squared. That would be like that number there, and that would be like that number there. So, yay. Yes, question. Yep. How do we know this wasn't like x to the third and x to the second and stuff? All right, so here's how you do it. This number... It's right next to the remainder. Remember, this is the remainder. We never mess with that. We never, we never had a zero. Did you ever put a zero back in your problem? No. The remainder is just a separate thing, and you don't touch it. This is your constant. That means it will not have an x on it. The next number over from it, that's your x's. And the next number over from that is your x squareds. And if there would have been another number over from that, that would have been your x to the thirds. Get the idea? Yes. Yep. Ah, it was missing a term. Then that would be a zero there. Let's do one just like that. So you're saying, let's say we had this. Okay, so imagine, even if we had long division, let's go back to long division for a second to remember how to do that. Do you get, this one's missing a term. It goes right from x squared to no x's at all. Do you get you're really supposed to put in a plus 0x and then minus 1 to hold the place? You do that same exact thing on synthetic. So we're going to finish this one with long division. Then we're going to do it with synthetic. And I think once you're good at this, pretty much all kids, when given a choice, will do synthetic because it's way faster. Always start with an X up top. Berlin. Tell me what to do. Excellent. Keep going. Draw a line. What's the next thing that a lot of people forget? Yep, opposite, opposite. So 0 and a negative x makes negative x. Drop it down. Negative x minus 1. Okay. What's next? Negative 1 on top. Negative 1 times x, negative x. Negative 1 times positive 1 is negative 1. Opposite, opposite. The cancels out at 0. Sweet, it worked. Okay. Now, to the side, 
write this. Negative 1, put a little box around it. 1, 0, negative 1, draw the line. That is called synthetic. First of all, it's way quicker to write the problem. We already saved time there. Next, take it from Snoop Dogg. You drop it like it's hot. And then multiply it, add it, multiply it. What's negative 1 times negative 1? Positive 1. You add them down, you get a 0 at the end. Cool. That gets walled off just so you don't by accident use it because that is the remainder. And the final answer, this comes down, x plus 1. And then can you do the rest? Remember, this is the constant. It doesn't have an x. This one has an x. Oh, look at that. x plus 1, x minus 1. Okay. Let's do one more that's like a little more aggressive. I'm going to write this one down. 3x to the third plus 6x squared plus x plus 3. You know what? I'm not going to put it in this because I want you to do this with synthetic. And I will say that the root is negative 3. Use synthetic. If you have to, then set it up with long division if you just can't do the other way. But try synthetic. The root is negative 3. Did you get that? Negative 3 in the little box, 3, 6, 1, 3. Okay. Now, drop it like it's hot. I'll pause for a second while I give this. Okay, so I've pulled up the homework, and it looks like this. And I honestly, I said this the other class, so I'll just say it again. Um, I really don't like this, how this worksheet is designed, because the very first problem is a trick problem. And then the second problem is another trick problem. You don't start with trick problems, okay? It just confuses everybody, so I'll work through them with you. But uh, we'll do those in a minute because I don't like starting with trick questions, all right? So let's do number three, which is not a trick question. Use synthetic to show x equals 2 is not a factor, and it never was a factor. Please change the word factor to root. This worksheet has serious issues. Because the factor is like in parentheses with a plus. So negative 2 is a root. Show that that's not a root of that. Okay. So you go like this. 2. And then you go 1, 2, negative 16, negative 32. Draw the line. And all you got to do is show this thing has a remainder. Because if it has a remainder, then it wasn't a root. Take some sage advice from the Snoop Dogg and drop it like it's hot. All right. Twelve minute warning just went off. Classes are short on Wednesdays. Wow. Okay, you should have gone 1 times 2 is 2, 2 plus 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 16, Adam, I get 0, 0, and so, didn't you know that? <laughs> Sorry, 2 times 4 is 8, going a little fast there, 8, and then this would be negative 8, sorry, negative 8 times 2 is negative 16, there. And now they still don't work. They told us it wasn't going to work. All right. And then this and this together, when you, careful now, when you 
add them, what do you get? Negative 48. Then it says rewrite the equation with the remainder. All right. Then it's this, which is x minus 2, and this, which is a You get where I got those from? This one here gives me that one. This 4 here gives me that one. And this negative 8 gives me that one. But wait, Mr. Server, there's a remainder. Just put it there. Remember when we started the hour and we had the remainders and we just put them at the end? Same idea. So that means if you multiplied this out, it would get you most of the right answer, but then you'd have to add negative 48 to it to actually get that. Double checking. Nope, this is correct, and here's how I can prove it. Would you agree that this would have to get multiplied by that, and that'll make a total of x cubed? There we go. Okay. Now, again, another normalish one, number four. We'll go back and like work on the weird ones in a second. But number four. Just pause for a moment and realize how insane this is. We are going to be able to factor that. This is some of the biggest factoring in the whole school. Like out of all of your classes like you will ever have in math, like even in calculus, they usually don't do factoring of things this big. So this class does get to some kind of cool algebra. Like we do the most probability in here of any other class at the high school. I know calculus teachers that cannot do the higher levels calculus. The people that teach Calc 3 can't do the probability in this class. All right, so this has got some hardcore probability, and it, it, which we'll do later, and it's some, hot, some hardcore factoring. So, and Wherever it says factor, the teacher that was writing this got just brain frozen, and it should say root or zero. But if x equals three is a factor, then I'm a I'm Rumpelstiltskin. X equals three can't be a factor, but it can be a root. All right, so I'm going to put the three here. One negative three, five. Making sure there's no missed terms. To the fifth, to the fourth, to the third, to the second, to the first. Yeah, there wasn't any missed terms. If there were, I'd put it placeholders, but there isn't. So I'm just going to keep copying. Negative 15, negative 6, and positive 18. And I draw the line, and I drop it like it's hot. Multiply, add. Multiply, add. I'll let you keep going. Anybody already done? Did it work? How do you know it worked? Air quotes, because you had a zero remainder. Very good. Now remember, though, even if you got it to work, because you got a zero at the end, like I just did there, you can't leave that mishmash of numbers. You have to actually have something that's factored. So you've got to be able to interpret this. So, what does this mean? That 3 there, what's the factor for that? X minus 3. This thing here, holy cow. Do you get that's the constant? So then I'm going to go x, x squared, x to the thirds, x to the fourths. So that is 1x to the fourth. I like to clean it up and just call it x to the fourth. Do I have to write 0x to the thirds? Nope. And then I'm say plus 5x squared. Do I have to write 0x? Nope. Minus 6. Cool! And you've done all that work for nothing because you get it marked wrong right now. Know why? Nope. It's not that. It's not factored all the way. That right there can be factored. Everybody take a second. You'll see. It's not that bad. On an easier R2 level question, they could have just asked that 
you know, like factor that. If you're having trouble, start with x squared and x squared. Did you figure it out? LV, what do you think? Yep. Am I finally done? No! You have to go again! x squared plus 6, that's not required to be factored, but that one is. So I may as well just do it all the way. x minus 3 for this one. x plus root 6 with an i. And x minus root 6 with an i. And if that's blowing your head off, then it's fine. Just leave it this way if that's too difficult for you. Uh, and last but not least, x plus 1 and x minus 1. Ah, my minus got goofy there. There we go. Now that's factored all the way. And kids that can do that extra cool kid factoring right here, you're going to get your imaginary roots right where other people oftentimes aren't. Imaginary roots plus and minus i root 6. All right. So I obviously helped you a lot. I haven't finished that one, but it's really close. Uh, and I'm going to assign you, we're going to go back and look at the first two like trick questions, but I'm going to assign you to do problems five and six and the ones at the beginning, but I'll give you some more help there. So basically, we're doing one through six today. And here's number one. If we look at it, what's the trick in the trick question? There's a missing term. What's the missing term? The constant. The normal number that doesn't have an x. So what you'd have to put there is a what? A zero. So then when you do synthetic, remember it's not factor, it's root. You go 2, 1, negative 16, 28, and 0. How do you make that the first question on the page? And even with some help, a lot of people would have trouble with this one. Missing term. So we put that zero right there. And now, drop it like a tot, multiply, add, multiply, add, and then hopefully you'll be able to finish it. What could you have done that would have made the problem a lot easier from the beginning? What is the prime directive? Look for a greatest common factor. X x and x you could have factored an x out at the very beginning and then your life would have been a lot easier get how when i pull an x out i would have x squared minus 16x plus 28 and then if your whole goal is to factor it you could have just factored it all the way how do you make a 28 with a 14 and a 2 can that make a 16 yeah it can see you could have factored it right off the bat if you would have noticed that x goes into everything. All I'm saying is, I have factored it. This is going to work. This is going to work. But I'm, I guess I'll just finish it. 14 and 2. There. I got it factored all the way. And I didn't need this stupid synthetic division. So anyway. But if you notice that there's this x in everything, it's so much easier. And on a test, can I say, well, you can't be smart and factor out the x. No, I, I can't say that. You can be smart and factor out the x. And then it would be easier to do your synthetic after that. You know what I mean? You could still do synthetic once you factored out this. You just use this. Your synthetic could have been 2, and then 1, negative 16, 28. Way easier synthetic because you don't have to use a placeholder. All right, so that was kind of a trick question. Do you see that on number two, there's also two missing terms? Just look at this. It's going four, three, two, and it just stops. It's like a countdown for the launch of the space shuttle. Three, two, and then they just stop. Seems wrong, I and mean, it would be. Usually, if you get to the final 10 seconds, they can't stop anything. Up until then, they can actually pull the plug. But once it gets to the final 10 seconds, it's going to happen. And if they realize, oh, crap, we've got a leak in tank six or whatever, 
the launch is still happening because you can't pull a plug at that point. It's too late. So, did you see that SpaceX's Falcon, uh, the, the one that's going to go to Mars, had a little problem on the launch pad the other day? I'll see if I can show it after the video is done here. So, all right. Yes. You would have to factor it out. Yes, you want to factor it all the way. That's all I got for you for for you for.